وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A questioner asked, seeing that many people are taking this time out to travel or go on holiday, what is the ruling on traveling and when is one permitted to shorten their prayer? I have read many different opinions and they all seem to have strong evidence behind them. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasulih nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Traveling is one of those issues that uh, we all experience uh, from time to time, but people do often struggle with understanding the proper rulings on traveling. So the first thing is to understand what makes a person a traveler. What is it that makes a person a traveler? Or what is it that brings a person into the ruling of traveling? So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the distance that a person has to intend to travel. Now, we're not saying they travel this distance. They currently just open the door of their house and they walked out of the door of their house. What is the distance? What is the distance for which a person has to be intending to travel for it to be considered traveling? So let me give you an example. I open the door of my house and I intend to visit my next door neighbor. Am I traveling? I think we all agree that I'm not traveling in that situation. Okay, I open the door of my house and my intention is to visit my mother who lives 10 minutes away. Is that traveling? I think we all agreed that that isn't traveling. Now, there isn't a distance that you can put and say that, or at least in my, in my opinion, there isn't a distance that you can say that this is, you know, this is on the dot, the distance. But you're probably looking at somewhere in the region of 45 to 50 miles, somewhere in the region of about 80 kilometers, give or take. And that does depend upon what the people understand to be traveling. and What is considered to be traveling, uh, generally speaking, it's a common understanding that this is, a, this is a journey, I'm traveling here. But roughly, if you wanted to put an amount on it, somewhere in that region. But I don't think it's the case that 44 miles is not traveling and 45 miles is traveling. It is a approximation to help you. But what really matters is what is actually commonly in the earth of the people considered to be traveling within the earth of the people, within the common understanding of people, what is considered to be traveling. So typically, I think all of us would agree someone traveling 100 miles or 150 kilometers, for example, is traveling, generally speaking. Someone, I open the door of my house and I'm intending to go to a city that is 100 miles or 150 kilometers away. I think pretty much everybody would agree that that is, that that is traveling. Distances less than that will probably be subject to some differences of opinion. And if you feel confused, then you can use a rough guide of about 50 miles or so, around about 80 kilometers or so as a rough guide but generally speaking, it just depends on what is commonly understood to be traveling. Okay, so that's a distance. Now I open the door of my house. When does the ruling of traveling start? So it starts once I have left the built up area of my town or city. So when I'm in my city, there are all you know houses and they're all together and it's a break, some more houses. Eventually the houses finish and there is nothing but plain land, plain fields or plain desert or you know, open land. At that point, with my intention of traveling, for example, 100 miles or 150 kilometers, that's my intention to travel all the way there. As soon as I leave my city and the land becomes open and the built up area, the area of the houses ceases, then I can start to apply the ruling of the traveler. So when I start to apply the ruling of the traveler, what sort of rulings am I talking about? Well, 
First of all, it is permitted for me to break my fast if I wish. The scholars of Islam, they say, if it is easier for you to fast, you should continue fasting if you can. And if it's difficult for you to fast, it's better for you to break your fast. Uh, however, you have the choice to do either. And also the permissibility of shortening the prayers and the permissibility of joining between the prayers. Shortening the prayers and joining between Dhuhr and Asr and separately joining between Maghrib and Isha. Either joining between Dhuhr and Asr at Dhuhr time or at Asr time and joining between Maghrib and Isha at Maghrib time or at Isha time. And as for shortening the prayers, it is that every prayer that is four raka'at becomes two raka'at. So Dhuhr becomes two and Asr becomes two and Isha becomes two. There is no change to Fajr and no change to Maghrib. So I'm, you know, on this journey, I'm going to a city that is 100 miles or 150 kilometers away. And on this journey, I have stopped fasting and I am joining my prayers and I'm also shortening my prayers. This is while I'm on the road. When I enter that city, a new question arises. Am I to remain a traveler or have I become a resident of that new city? Here we give the example of 100 miles, 150 kilometers. I've reached the city. Am I continuing to do the same things or am I reverting back to how I was before? So here, uh, some of the scholars, what they looked at is they looked at the majority. They looked at a time, the time that you intend to stay. Some of them said four days. Some of them said up to 15 days. Some of them said more than that. For the time that you're intending to stay, if you're intending to stay longer than that, then as soon as you reach that city, you're no longer a traveler because your intention is to stay longer. And others, they, as we said, they differed over the length. Others, they looked at it differently. They said, if you are in that city living as a traveler, behaving as a traveler, you're carrying your things in suitcases and you're living out of a suitcase and you know, you are without your permanent residence and so on, then you remain a traveler even if you go longer than that period of time. That's a matter the scholars uh, differed over, generally speaking. And in my opinion here, what is correct is the, either we go with a longer period of time, we say that roughly as a guide, again, a guide of a couple of weeks, a guide of a couple of weeks. However, if you were to go longer than that and you still are behaving as a traveler, I think it's still correct. So you now have intended to stay, let's say 10 days. So you're still a traveler. You're still a traveler in that time. However, while you're a traveler at that time, it is better for you not to join the prayers if you can pray them individually. Even though you're a traveler, because right now you're in this city, you're there for 10 days, so it's better you pray your prayers individually. Of course, if you're praying behind an imam who is resident, you need to pray full, even if you come late for the prayer, you need to pray completely and you need to pray fully, uh, not shortened. But if you're praying by yourself, Pray shortened, and generally speaking, you pray each prayer on time. But if you join between them from time to time while you are a traveler there, then that is fine. If it soon turns out that you're no longer a traveler because a long time you've changed your mind, you decide to stay there for six months or three months or something like that, then in that case, there is nothing wrong. You straight away change, you go back to the residency, the rules of being a resident in your city, and that's what you do. There is another situation which many of the scholars mention, which is that a person goes to a city and doesn't know when they're going to leave, but they're going to leave as soon as the job is done. 
So maybe they're waiting for a passport to be renewed. And the first day goes and it's still not there. Second day goes, one week goes, another day goes. But as soon as it comes, they're planning on leaving. And this person is also a traveler, inshallah ta'ala. So I hope that that helped to explain some of the basic rulings of traveling. It's a topic really that we should take in a full class, whereby somebody either studies a book of fiqh or a book from the ahadith al-ahkam, the ahadith of the ahkam, and they study it comprehensively in detail with all of its evidences. I mean, when you're talking about the answer to a question, you tend to summarize and, and to bring things in and make them easy. But when we're talking about wanting all the details and the evidences, the differences of opinion and why and the reasons for them, then in this you would need to go to an explanation of a book of fiqh or an explanation of a book of the ahadith that deal with rulings. But inshallah, that is something that will just summarize it and hopefully make it easy to apply and to understand. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.